Welcome back, everyone. So today we're back with the Toshiba T3200SX. This is one of my favorite machines um, of all time because it. I owned one of these when I was in uh, middle school, actually. And I had bought it from a local computer shop for 50 bucks. This was in about 1996 or so. So it was about six or seven years old at the time, and uh, yeah, I got a pretty good deal on it. Mine was a T3200SX-120, so it had a 120 megabyte Connor peripherals hard drive. This one I bought a little less than a year ago, and uh, when it arrived to my home, it had a, a Connor 40 megabyte hard drive with the gasket completely melted off. So I replaced it with another Connor that I had kicking around in my parts bin. And it's been a good runner ever since. I had to recap the display. They were actually actively leaking electrolyte. You could smell it. Um, and you could actually see it sizzle when you took the, the lid off after running it for a while. So this one did need a little bit of work. Uh, we also upgraded the RAM with modified 30 megabyte SIMs. And real quick though, these portable desktops, they really, they were a niche market in the early 90s, late 80s. And there were several different portable desktops like this, um, like the Compact Portable 3, well actually the entire Compact Portable lineup. Um, there was the IBM, uh, I forget the model number, but there, it was like a portable PS2 with a plasma display. Uh, much like the Compact Portable 3. Uh, there were other off-brand uh, portable desktop machines. What a portable desktop gave you was the full computing power and longevity with some expandability that you would expect in a desktop computer, but with the portability when you needed it. You couldn't run these on batteries. Um, this particular model features two expansions, actually three expansion slots, uh, one 16-bit and one 8-bit ISA. Strangely enough, um, and those are accessed from behind this cover here, I have not found a single ISA card, except for maybe a token ring card, that actually fits properly in that slot. So I haven't found a sound card. I'd love to find a sound card that actually properly fits. But for whatever reason, nothing really fits properly in that slot. Although, you know, any expansion card meant for a desktop PC would work, in theory. Um, there is a third expansion slot on this model, and this is why I'm making this video. The third expansion slot is a proprietary Toshiba expansion um, bus. And I just got one of the rarest pieces of hardware you'll ever find. And it is an original Toshiba modem for this machine. Uh, this is the factory modem and um, and a serial expansion. This gives you a third serial port, um, which is incredible. I, I found this on eBay and I knew I'd never see another one. So I bid higher than I would normally bid. And I won at half of what I had placed the bid for. Uh, this is a factory, this is revision F, T24A. Um, and uh, this fits in that very unusual Toshiba expansion slot. And I figured, you know what, finding a T3200SX is really hard right now. Um, I have had a, a static saved search for maybe 15 years. And uh, that's how I found this one, because it popped up, and there it was. I'm like, awesome! So I I placed a bid on it, got it from actually, it was a Goodwill was the eBay seller. So I got it from Goodwill, and um, they shipped it over. I paid a mint for this machine, but to find this expansion card is even rarer. It's just crazy. Um, it's just crazy how rare this some of this stuff really is. And it was funny, but it's funny because these were ubiquitous, um, you know, in the, in the dawn of the, um, desktop publishing era, you know, the eighties and nineties, you know, they were just everywhere, but 
because these weren't true multimedia machines, a lot of these were dumped, um, you know, s sometime in the mid-90s. People were just dumping them. But here they are. The surviving examples are truly collector's items. And if you're lucky enough to have one, um, you know what you've got. So without further ado, let's go ahead and install this card. So this came out of a T3100, I believe. But it's the same card. It's the same, same expansion bus. I don't know what other accessories Toshiba offered as expansion items. But I do know that you got to have a modem. You know, if there's a modem made for it, you got to have it. It's just... <laughs> so, I think what I'm going to do, though, um, moving forward with this machine, is I'm going to pull the power supply apart. And we'll probably do a cap job on that. But I don't think it's entirely necessary. Um, my only gripe is the plasma display isn't as bright as I remembered them being. Um, the brightness did improve when I did the caps on the um, on the uh, on the panel itself. Let's take a quick look at this um, at this card real quick in, in the light here. So there's your bus connector. I assume it's just a, a a really customized version of ISA, and nothing really special there. So this could probably be reverse engineered and used for something else. Make sure I get the card in the right direction. It should just slide in. Tommy is in my way. He's just being a little nudge right now. Let's take a look inside there. I've got this light. But, yeah, I never expected to find one of these cards. And when one popped up on eBay, I'm like, I'll never, ever see another one again. Um, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. There's actually two connectors in there. So I bet you, oh, I bet you this is an 8-bit card. And if it were a 16-bit card, it would have a second connector on the side here. So it's definitely two different. Okay, that, that actually kind of makes some kind of sense there. So let's see if we can get it in without, uh, without much fuss. I'm told that this card works for all portable desktop models. The T3000 series anyway. Let's see if it plugs in. Yeah. I don't know if there's any drivers needed. Um, I know that if they are, um, I will never find them. Uh, <laughs> they're probably non-existent at this point. So this machine has also had its floppy drive uh, caps replaced. I really went through this machine. I, um, you know, I found a good original Connor hard drive. A, uh, I think it's a 200 meg card uh, drive. And I made the necessary repairs to that. And um, I don't think it needed anything. But So that's how it sits in the back there. Now you got three serial ports. Pretty cool. So serial on. There's a three position switch here. That's on. I don't know. Maybe it activates the port and then automatic. So... We'll leave it on automatic. So this probably just adds COM3, I'm guessing. I'll go into the BIOS and see if it picks up anything. See what, see what that does for us. So I, I assume it's, it's basically just COM3. And the mouse is currently on COM1. So let's see what happens. Here we go. How do you get in the BIOS? So F2? I think it's F2. The RAM expansion was kind of a pain in the ass. Um, I had to do some trial and error with different modules, but they required a modification be made to one of the pins. Um, okay, so I have to hit F2 earlier. That's no big deal. Plasma displays are notoriously difficult to view um, on camera. They just don't see. So you can see that shadow drop down. That's not real life. That, that, that's not really a, a thing that happens. We still have a functioning mouse, so we didn't cause an IRQ conflict. There are no jumpers on the card, so nothing to configure. And I don't believe there are any jumpers on the logic board, so it's more of a plug-and-play kind of thing. So let's just close out of Windows here. The clock battery was pretty easy to uh, figure out. Actually, didn't have any issues there. 
connect it up to? Or is it delete? I guess delete. All right, let's do F1. Is it F1? Tell me it's F1. I forget. No, not F1. Is it delete? Maybe it's delete. Have to figure it out. No, not delete. I think it's F2. I just have to hold it. No. All right, let's maybe from a cold boot. I'm not having much luck getting into BIOS. I think there's a DOS utility that opens it up, though. It's been a minute since I've played with this machine. I just want to see what the IRQ situation looks like. Actually, I could just run MS Diag or MS, uh, MSC, no, what the fuck is it called? Um, well, whatever it's called, I'm going to run it. Um, we'll, we'll get that going. And uh, MSD, MS Diagnostics. There it is. Here, let's get out of Windows real quick. That'll just show me what the current um, IRQ situation and the uh, comms and all that. MSD. M MSD. Let's see what we get. Okay. Com ports. Three ports. So it shows all three ports. So there you go. And I guarantee you it's COM3. So I don't have to do anything in BIOS. It should just plain work. COM1 is only 1200 baud for some reason. So no COM4, but we do have three functioning COM ports. That's cool. Um, awesome. So yeah. Uh, let's see. Is there a Toshiba directory? There is. CD Toshiba. So this machine now has... It's now really, really rare. Um, good luck finding another one uh, with this configuration because you won't. Um, you just won't. That's Bananacom. Why is Bananacom in here? Test three. Oops. Yeah, that's Bananacom. Diagnostic test. System configuration. Um, three async adapters. One hard disk. One printer. Press enter key. It does have a coprocessor. Yes, it's a 386SX with a coprocessor. Pretty cool. Let's do a Diag. Test the floppy drive. No, I don't need to test that. Test the hard drive. No, I think that's good. Test the printer. No. Oops. N for no. Memory test in progress. I'll let it run as memory test. So that's pretty much it. Short, simple, to the point. We've got the expansion card from the heavens that is almost impossible to find anywhere at any price and maybe i'm just making this video to brag that i have it i don't know whatever it... <laughs> why do we do the things we do i'm gonna keep that uh, that blanking plate just in case um i'll put it in the bag i have the bag too that's the original bag no manuals i'd like to find a set of manuals for this just to have them you know, just, just to have them on hand, it would be kind of cool. Right? Right, Tommy? All right. Well, that's it, folks. I uh, appreciate your viewership and, uh, stay tuned for more amazing content. I'm joking. <laughs> There's no amazing content here. There's your display test. That's it. Oh, I can get into setup here. There we go. Zero. All right. Page up for serial port options. COM1, COM2, dedicated modem COM level. Ah, see, I don't know. I, I, is that what I'm? Is that what I'm doing? Oops, what did I just do? COM1. We'll set that to COM3. Yeah, there we go. I think that's all we have to do. So three COM ports. I mean, who would need any less, right? Looks like my clock battery's uh, gone to shit because my date and time is wrong. 
It is not Friday, July 6, 1990, uh, contrary to popular belief. Um, so let's go back to set the date and time. The current date and time is... Well, the battery can't be dead because it didn't reset all the custom settings that I put in here. So it can't be that bad off. All right. It is uh, 126. 6.35 p.m. So that would be 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18. Oops. Wow, what did I do? I'm lock one or not. Oh, left and right. Eighteen thirty five. It is currently January. January, January 26, 2000, <laughs> there we go, Friday, okay, F10 to reboot, Oops. Did I save? I think it saves automatically. Let's go back and see. Yeah, it saved it. No, it didn't save it. Look at that. It didn't save it, the bastard. F5 to set. Yes. Hmm. I don't think it saved our settings. Weird. Well, looky here. It actually survived a restart. That's kind of cool. So let's go back. Yeah. So normal, intense, normal, semi bright. What does that look like? Oh, that doesn't do anything here. Oh, there we go. Normal, bright, intensity, semi-bright. Uh, what the hell? All right, let's see what that does. I think I already looked at that setting before, and I forget what the outcome was. I think it inverts the display somehow. But I just remembered my um, my Toshiba from when I was a kid. It just had eye-searing brightness. It was so bright, you could just land an aircraft on it. Like it was, it was so it would put out so much heat that you would actually get a suntan from the damn thing. It was that good. Um, oh yes, okay, that's what it does. So. I don't think we want that setting. <laughs> I think I might have to put it back. Because what it does is it makes all the graphics look highlighted. Um, yeah, it, it, it does screw with the image. Yeah, see, this is now darker. Something like that. Yeah, so this doesn't work for me. This is bad. Let's Let's go back to what it was. Yeah, that doesn't look right. <laughs> but text comes out like blazing. So, you know what? I think there's, I think this is actually pro totally normal. Um, but, you know, 25 years can really, you know, change your perception of, uh, there's so much, so much glare on this thing. Um, so we'll go back in there. See, look at how bright that is. Like that's that's what I'm that's what I remember. But 
we can put it back to normal because that that is useless that is just utterly useless um so let's yeah okay f10 to reboot bring it back to normal now let's see if you can see a difference on the phone yeah i can already see it's a little bit darker a little bit dimmer than it was But it's really nice to have this thing finally sorted and, and, and just, you know, upgraded to everything I can, everything I can throw at it. I'm not putting a, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to get asked this. Um, someone's going to mention it, but I'm not putting a solid state on this machine. It's not happening. Um, there is no scenario in the works where I would put a solid state in this machine. I'm not interested. So if, uh, you know, so if the... If the audience could pipe down on that, I'd appreciate it. Um, we're going to keep it as a mechanical drive um, for personal reasons. I shouldn't even have to explain why. It's just that's my thing. Um, I like the sound. I like the clickiness. I like the. I like the. I just love it. Ugh, makes me all, all giddy inside. You know, got to have a mechanical drive, and I got a modem I'm never going to use. So you know, I'll never say never. Well, guys. I think that's going to call it for the it's going to it's going to end the video i you know i have been considering setting up like a like one of those um virtual phone jacks in, you know in here somewhere just so that we can dial out to a number you know just to see what happens um let's see if quick link picks up that modem um i don't think i have to add a modem in windows 3.1 i don't think i need a driver for it Let's see, does it pick up COM3? I think so. Well, I just killed my mouse. That's nice. Thanks, Quick Link. It just took over my mouse. If we have a conflict, conflict on IL-1. Actually, it, the whole machine locked up. So there's that. I can't even control alt delete my way out of this one. Oh well. Hmm. That sucks. One finger salute. I haven't played with modems since 2001. Just to just to put it in a frame of reference. It's been that long. I haven't touched a modem since 2001 so i'm gonna have to uh to play around and see what i can come up with well, thank you all for watching i think that's it that's all i got for you so you're welcome